and welcome to Brand Story with me, Tarun Nangia. Today, we're going to discuss uh, the Obroy Group and PRS Biki Obroy, whom we lost recently, one of the doyens of Indian hospitality. And I have with me Mr. Vivek Shukla, who's the CEO of the Lalit Suri Hospitality Group, somebody who worked with him for long years. And he would like to share memories and anecdotes of this gentleman who lived up to the long age of 94 before he left all of us last week. Uh, Welcome, uh, Mr. Vivek Shukla, and uh, looking forward to some interesting insights from you. Uh, at the outset, uh, could you tell me your first meeting uh, with the legendary PRS Vicky Obra? So, uh, Mr. Nangya, thank you for having me in your prestigious program. I would like to begin firstly with my paying my homage, uh, my sincere, sincere condolences uh, to. Uh, Mr. Piaris Obroy's family, uh, Mr. Arjun Obroy, Mr. Vikram Obroy, uh, everyone at the Obroy Group. Um, it's it's a great loss for, I'm sure, the Obroy Group and the EIH Limited and its subsidiary holding. But it's also a great, great uh, loss for all of us as hoteliers uh, across the world. Um, the tribute and homage and condolences are also in order uh, on behalf of Dr. Jyotsna Suri, uh, Chairperson and Managing Director of Bharat Hotels Limited, um, who knew Mr. P.R.S. Obroy very dearly and was a very dear family friend of hers, the entire family, and our founder, late Sri Lalit Suriji. Um, my real heartfelt condolences to the family. Uh, I'm actually a non-OCLD pass out. Uh, Obroy School of Hotel Management in those days uh, was the only stream through which uh, you made it into an executive and a managerial cadre. And I was an exception because I used to work for another competitive competition chain. And I was snitched over uh, from Kolaba to Arvin Point. Uh, in 1995, I had the great fortune of working for the Obroy Group from 1995 up until 2001. Um, I worked extensively at then the T. Obroy Tars, which is now the Trident in Nariman Point, and uh, was instrumental in installing the property management system, worked in their front office department, and uh, it went from uh, you know growing into the shoes of the reservations manager, and thereafter as Manager Coordination and Vice President's Office. I had the great fortune of uh, first interacting with uh, Mr. Piaris Obroy at four o'clock in the morning. And that too on the footpath of the hotel where he was overseeing a project. He worked very, very long hours. He would literally be up literally all night working, uh, the workaholic that he was. And uh, uh, this was the time when we were opening Frangipani um, as a restaurant. Uh, which is a very popular destination for Mumbaikers and, and travelers. And he asked me, are you married, my son? So I said, sir, uh, yes, I am. So he said, he looked at his vice president and said, Let's, listen, tell your wife not to blame me for this. It's him to be blamed. And I think I've, I found that to be really, uh, you know, out of the box, uh, you know, not expecting the chairperson of a company talking about it at four in the morning when you're actually inspecting a project site. Um, but that was a very brief interaction because I went on to undertaking a lot of project assignments at the uh, Obra Hotels in Mumbai. I was chosen to open the Wildflower Hall in Mashobra, the Hotels of Familiars, and uh, I was the operations manager there, um, the year 2000-2001, opened that hotel. It's a dream come true, fairy tale experience for me. And uh, I think Mr. Obroy uh, started to interact uh, with me, um, because I think he had some kind of a conviction in me um, where the project update that I used to give of the progress of the project uh, to him in Delhi, uh, where his headquarter and office was. Uh, and once, uh, you know, there was a budget exercise wherein we had budgeted for the spa revenues for the financial year, starting from, from a particular month, um, I think it was and he said that, why have you not budgeted for the first three, four months of that financial year? And I said, Mr. Obroy, I personally feel you will not be ready. He says, no, that can't be true. I said, well, I'm here at the site. And I say that with conviction. 
he said, all right, I'm going to be visiting by floor hall the next week. Uh, he visited. He had a detailed round of the hotel for three, four days. Uh, he inspected all the project sites. And towards the end of the, his visit, the property walked around and he said, you were right. We will not be able to open for three, four months. So he kind of acknowledged no matter what was your designation, what was your title, I think he carried so much of humility with him. It was unbelievable. Some key learnings, I think uh, legendary, extraordinary, extraordinary uh, personality that he was. He would identify a plant and said, this needs more nitrogen. Um, he, he would uh, comment on the how yellow the oak of the egg, egg is. And he would actually send a circular across all the hotels in terms of purchasing an egg. And that was like a specification which he made it as a gold standard for his group. He would go about detailing on how white the linen should be, what kind of a fabric softener should be used. He would go about detailing on what should be the grammage of a pillow which the guest rooms must have across all his hotels. Uh, comfort um, and quality stood out uh, miles ahead in his mind and luxury was redefined uh, by him and through him uh, which we all have learned and imbibed and grown as hoteliers across the world uh, and it's a true tribute to remembering uh, the person that he was truly remarkable uh, opening the brasserie the all day dining facility of the hotel at Bailflower Hall uh, there were these four blade fans, wooden fans, very fancy ones. And he said, before it gets launched, it should actually be all at perpendicular. You know, they all should be at one uh, direction, all fans, and they should all be turned on when he says go. So that when the, at the same speed of one or two of the fan speed, so that when the fans blade rotate, they all rotate in synchronization. So I think those detailing were marvelous to learn what should be the level of music in the lobby, what should be the lighting during the day in the lobby or in the public spaces, what should be the lighting in during snow time, for example, that beautiful resort uh, experiences snowfall during winters, what should it be during evening, what should it be during day. So I think uh, the detailing that one learned was remarkable and I think we still carry some of those learnings with us. And uh, and yes, uh, we've all grown up learning uh, ourselves. And I truly um, appreciate and of what I am and who I am today um, in life, I attribute it to him. And it's been an honor, of course, uh, personally working and interacting with Mr. Obroy. One thing I want to know from you that uh, uh, Mr. PRS, Vicky Obroy started working late in his life, that is closer to his late 40s, uh, and then worked up till the ripe age of 94. Uh, if you could share any anecdotes or quirks of what a person he was, his management style, uh, any specific incidents that happened, which you can't forget, that uh, I have seen this man in this manner. Uh, other things like uh, what food he liked to eat. If you could tell me, aspects one is the managerial aspects other the personal aspects i think it's, it's been literally now uh, over 22 years if you ask me and i think what he liked eating uh, was something perhaps i was not really involved on a day-to-day -day basis but yes he was a foodie he enjoyed fine things in life he was uh, he enjoyed his uh, i think i still remember his cigars that he was a very very fine cigar uh, and he would he, he knew his cigars so well and he uh, would move around uh, inspections and his walkthroughs with cigar in his mouth or in his hand he enjoyed wearing hats I remember and he continued wearing uh, I'm sure up until now um, and and he had a very fine taste of dressing so I think you could his impeccable dressing standards were inspiration for all of us and we um, you know, enjoyed uh, looking at and admiring Mr. Obroy and how he dressed himself. He was he was impeccable in his communication. He would he would uh, actually go into a lot of details uh, uh, and in establishing the root cause of any situation that came across. I remember one of the hotels. 
a place did not smell right and and he went into the depth of asking the general manager of what that smell was and it wasn't smelling well and smelling good up until the engineer and the general manager gave a very satisfactory response to him and to which he corrected he wouldn't keep quiet he would not rest at all with that subject um i recall uh, in one of the conclaves that was happening for the oprah group where a general manager kind of mentioned that he made a mistake and he acknowledged that he made a mistake which costed the company quite a bit um uh, and uh, he said well as long as you had a learning and you're not going to repeat it i would forgive you so i think he was a very forgiving and a very patient human being he knew the nuances that are required to run a hospitality business definitely learned from his father late shri mohan singh obroy ji and i think uh, that grew on to the family to what uh, mr arjun obroy and mr vikram obroy and the entire family is today is a learning through generations that have passed on and i only wish them the very best up ahead in the journey uh, yes he will be very inspired uh, but uh, yes it, it you know he was a great human being to interact with and i i want to know something from you uh, what is it with hotel yes that he worked up to the very late age even in his late 80s he was working uh, is it the passion you need to be a hotelier that takes you to work even in that late age uh, he lived on his farm but he kept an eye on the hotel properties which he kept on visiting uh, could you share with me what is it with hoteliers Uh, and great hoteliers that makes them work even in their seventies and eighties in the industry. You would know because you yourself had a had a chain. I think uh, a hotel never sleeps. Hotel is a twenty four hour, three sixty five days uh, business. And yes, uh, if you believe in what you do, uh, passion is a part of our DNA. As hoteliers, we can't rest in peace till such time we have not seen through. a day's work that needs to be completed the customers that must be ensured that have had a comfortable stay a dining experience or any experience at the property and any corrective measures that need to be uh, performed also above all our biggest assets are our people so we have to ensure that we invest great amount of time in their learning and development in their wellness and their uh, you know looking after the individual so i think it takes a lot because we are dealing on one hand with the customers the, on the other hand with the employees uh, which are the team members our associates that we manage and and this is a full time job and it's not one hotel it's multiple hotels across the landscape of the world that um, that the eih and the obra group was present in yeah thank you thank you so much for all these inputs uh, we would uh, we appreciate that you shared your time with us given your busy schedule in bangalore uh, in between meetings you took out time uh, and shared all these anecdotes with us it was indeed a pleasure chatting with you thank you so very much thank you so much mr nagya wishing you and everyone the best thank you thank you <laughs>